Uh, so our next speaker now is Zaid Bosco Lobo, who is an undergraduate student at the University of Illinois studying electrical engineering, computer science and game studies and design. He is the vice president of the University of Illinois VR Club and is also the VR competitive coordinator for Illinois Esports. You're very welcome, Zaid. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you for having me. Um, you can hear me, right? Just wanted to make sure. Awesome. Yeah, we can hear All you. Right. Let me do this and uh, go. Sure. Awesome. All right. Well, hello, everyone. I am super grateful to be among a, a panel of uh, amazing presenters. Um, as uh, Stephanie just mentioned, my name is uh, Zaid Bosco Lobo. Um, and I was asked or approached by uh, Jamie and Megan um, to give some sort of insight into what VR feels like as a student at the University of Illinois. And um, I was like, what, what do I have to add to this conversation? And then I realized um, the state of VR here at the university is really strong and there are a lot of things to talk about. So let's get right into it. Um, again, yeah, my name is Zaid Lobo. Um, I do a lot of different things here at the university. First and foremost, I'm an undergraduate student. Um, I'm studying electrical engineering, computer science, and game design. Um, among, or among other things, I'm also the uh, vice president of the virtual reality club here at the university. Um, I am the VR competitive coordinator for Illini Esports. Um, I am the lead instructor for VR Drift, which I'll talk about in a bit as well as a research assistant for uh, Professor Shackelford, uh, who is a uh, professor or professor in the Department of Anthropology. So um, what does that all have to do with VR? Let's talk a little bit about how I got into it. So um, a little anecdote about how I was introduced to VR. I was a first year here at the university. I was walking down my dorm dormitory hallway. I look to my left. I see a, uh, I see a student um, in their dorm room with their door open. They had this headset on, they had the, these controllers in their hands, and they were waving frantically. And you actually saw him on in the previous presentation. That is uh, my current roommate, Daniel, uh, playing Beat Saber. And um, I was wondering, what are you doing? So eventually he took off his headset and said, he looked at me and he said, do you want to try it? So I said, of course, I'd love to try it. And that's how I got hooked on VR, and I love it to this day. So um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a couple things and a couple ways that I got involved in the in the at the university in VR. So in the classroom, in the lab, outside the classroom, and just for fun. There's a lot of different things. So inside the classroom, there's a lot of different classes that offer um, VR experiences and VR um, VR uh, games that sort of help you learn and help you gamify the learning experience. Um, one of the uh, one of the classes here that's listed is uh, ECE 398 VR. Um, ECE is our electrical and computer engineering department, what department I'm in. Um, it is taught by Professor Elie. Um, and what uh, that lab specifically does is it takes uh, this class called Fields and Waves. Um, it's uh, it's a class about electromagnetic waves and signals, and it turns them into a series of labs that you complete each week either on uh, Wolfram, or, uh, Wolfram Alpha, or you complete them through VR, customized VR experiences that were made by uh, undergraduates and graduate students in her research group. And I used to be a part of their research group. They're awesome people. Um, they really put the effort into making their labs fun and making them gamified, making, the making it aesthetically pleasing. And I think it's, it's just such a great experience to have, especially in a course where um, electromagnetic signals might not be as easy to visualize, may it not be as easy to see. So it's really good to have that uh, lab in correlation with the actual course. The other one um, that uh, Jamie and Megan did talk about was Anthropology 399, taught by the one and only Professor Shackelford, who I work for. Um, it introduces methods and techniques for uh, archaeological digs. So um, this is in an effort to reduce the cost that it would take for people to actually get on a bus or a plane and go to an archaeological dig site and use the actual materials. Um, and it also makes uh, these digs and these methods more accessible for people who don't have as, uh, who are lower income or don't have as much money to keep going on these different digs. So you would learn or you would train in these settings. And then once you get to the actual dig site, you're good to go. Um, the other courses here 
um, that you can see all of these people are in their own labs. This is that the top right one is actually from uh, 398 um, VR. So that's the electromagnetics course. And the other two are from the VR archaeological uh, or VR archaeology, as we like to call it. Uh, course and they're all uh, working to they're all working together they usually pair up at a computer and uh, work through these labs and uh, those other classes that are offered uh, for VR development as a career not just not necessarily just as um, a learning tool or a learning method or a learning medium so the first one here is CS 498 so computer science course um, it used to be VR as uh, Jamie did mention uh, now it's shifted towards game development so um, there are two different two different courses, and they teach different things. So VR, uh, the VR section is taught in Unity, which is a game engine, and uh, the game development course is taught in Unreal Engine 4, which is a different game engine um, that is uh, used by Epic Games, the gaming company. But they're all great courses that teach you about the development or about the development of a game, what needs to go into it, the design process, rendering, uh, post production, everything that you need to know to start your own game. And the last course I'll talk about here is Informatics 490. So that's taught by Professor Cermak um, here at the university. He is a great person and a great resource for game design. So he teaches you about the uh, development life cycle of a game. So starting from the concept to design um, to working with other people in a group, uh, formulating teams and working through a game together and co-developing. Awesome. Uh, the second segment is uh, how many different labs that we have here at the, the university for uh, looking at VR um, in different ways. So let's get into that. Uh, the first lab is EVIL, which I'm a part of. Um, it's a funny acronym. It stands for Educational Virtual Immersive Learning. Um, it, we developed the VR Archaeology course that I just talked about, and we also have um, a seg section of the lab which I work on, which makes VR tech accessible to wheelchair users to make movements feel more natural, to reduce motion sickness. Another lab is the Professor Elie's lab who develops the Electromagnetic Principles uh, VR course that I talked about and studies more of the gamification aspect of it, which is really neat and something I'm really interested in. Um, Professor Ball here at the university, he's a part of the department of uh, the College of Media. And he uh, takes a little bit of a spin on VR. He likes to explore VR more of more as a medium so how computers have developed over the years to become more of a personal use device you can do so many things on it and you can use it to help with education he's looking at the use of vr in education and how that can be used um, in the future um, and the last group here is elixir which is uh under professor Odve from computer science um they are developing the hardware behind uh virtual virtual and augmented reality so the cameras that will go on a headset how it tracks where you are in the room positioning and everything um and that's a very different space than what the all the other previous three professors have been in but there's so much different research going on at the university that it's the state of vr is very strong i'm 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 positive Third, this is more of my area, which is outside the classroom. And here I'm going to talk about um, a few of the spaces that I like to be in for VR. So that's the Innovation Studio and the Idea Lab that uh, Jamie did talk about as well. Um, a lot of them offer different, different resources. I like to think of the spaces as uh, two different spaces that offer a few different things from each other. Um, both of them have my heart, but um, they offer free resources for students to use. And it's just amazing what you can do when you go into VR uh, for the first time. But la uh, lastly, in the outside of the classroom, we have the VR club, uh, which I'm the vice president of. Um, I like to shill the VR club a lot um, to people because I think it's a great place to be and it's a great community. So our three pillars are play, explore, learn. And with that comes a lot of different things that overlap, things that are very separate. Um, and we have different opportunities and different um, different events that we put on for students so that they can come in and do different things in the lab every Friday. So for play, we have game tournaments. We have game play sessions where we test out new games. Uh, for exploring, we have research and faculty come in and or talk to us about their research. We have um, different uh, experiences that we put on that we make everyone try out and discuss and talk about how VR helped to progress that experience. And for Learn, we have VR Drift, which is our unofficial uh, VR development course 
at the university. Um, the VR course here sadly shut down uh, due to COVID a while ago, and uh, we wanted to start it back up ourselves because we didn't. Uh, we, we were tired of waiting around, so that's where VR Drift comes into play, and I teach it in Unreal Engine. Um, here's a short experience that we like to have play called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. It's a really good experience to have in a really good um, cooperative game. Uh, one person's a headset trying to defuse a bomb, but they don't know how to defuse the bomb. The people outside the headset, though, have access to a manual that can help them defuse it. So there, it's it's a game about a lot of communication and a lot of uh, skill, or you need to develop a lot of skills to work together uh, to defuse it. In addition, this is probably our club's favorite game called Akron. Um, it's a game where if you're in the, there's one person in a headset and they're a tree. <clears throat> Everyone else is on their mobile phones and they're squirrels and they're trying to steal the acorns away from the tree. So the tree can throw rocks at them. They can throw uh, slime sludges and try to, try to uh, get these squirrels out of there. And the squirrels have to go run up to the tree, take the acorns and go back. So it's very fun. Our club has a great time playing it. The last thing I want to talk about, um, I know I'm a little, I don't want to be over on time, but um, the thing is just for fun. And this is where our esports group comes in. So a lot of, uh, when you put any sort of uh, education or physical activity behind the guise of a game, um, it becomes much easier for people to do. And uh, the games prove it. If we look at the, the top VR experiences um, in the store, uh, we can see a lot of these very physical games come out um, that are that keep just ending up on top. Beat Saber is very stamina based. Super Hot is very movement based. Uh, Boneworks uh, very physical. Uh, Pavlov is also very um, it's it's also a very physical game. So we can see that these games keep uh, coming up on top and keep showing that people like to play these games even though they're very physically exerting. And I have a few case studies, um, and uh, I, again, I'm also part of Illini Esports, which is our esports group on campus. And we have uh, 16 different titles that we compete in, and two of which are uh, VR competitive titles. So this first one is called Echo Arena. It's a combination of a lot of sports. You can see on that bottom right the GIF playing. Um, it's a zero gravity ultimate frisbee type game. And um, you can see on the top left over here that I split up all my players into different cubicle rooms um, and we all play together. We're all yelling at each other through the headset. It's a multiplayer game, so it's very cooperative. There's a lot of strategy involved. Um, it's always very fun. We have a good time playing it. And the last game, of course, I have to end with it is Beat Saber. Um, very fun, uh, very physically exerting. It takes a lot of stamina and rhythm to play. And um, I'm just very proud of my players for uh, taking on such a big task. That is, that's the end of my presentation. There's a lot, there was a lot to talk about and a lot to go through, but I, there's my contact information if you're interested. Um, I, I just like to put together VR resources on campus and I like to talk about it a lot. So thank you so much. Thanks, Ramon Zaid. That was a really, um fascinating talk. I love seeing all the different examples and all the different opportunities that are available to students. Um, I think particularly for this type of seminar, it's always important to have a student's perspective. So thank you so much for sharing with us today.